In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make one of those Inception style photos. It's like from the movie Inception, you know, where the background looks like it's going up towards the sky. Proper trippy. It's actually taken with a drone, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So come along with me in this video and I'll show you how. Welcome back to another video. I'm Carl Edwards and welcome to our channel, What Adventures, where we bring you some of our travel and adventure experiences. In this video, I wanna show you how to do a Inception style photo. It's actually called Droneception because you take it with a, with a drone and they're really cool. It just adds a little bit more flair to your photography and they look really, really cool on Instagram. I've posted a couple already and got some uh, great reviews and now I wanna try doing it with a car subject in the foreground. So I wanna take you up to the Northern Emirates, to Ras Al Khaimah. I found a nice, tight, windy road up there. It's a little bit different to the typical city roads that you'll find in Dubai, a little bit different from the highways. It's tight and windy with a desert either side. So I think it'll look really cool in a droneception photo. So come along with me, I'll take you up there. So now that we've arrived at the location, I've chosen this spot because, well, you've got to consider when you're capturing this kind of photo for the first time, you need to make sure you've got some great leading lines, ideally a straight road like this one. At the very distance of this one, just further down the road, it, is a little, it gets a little bit windy and I just want to add a little bit of extra flavor to this, this photo. So I'm going to show you how to do this and there's a few things to consider first. First, it's a relatively easy photo to capture. All you need is a drone. Um, it doesn't matter which drone, just try and make sure you use the one that has the highest quality uh, sensor uh, that's available to you. Try not to use any FPV or racing drones because you want to keep the horizon um, level and you'll thank me for that later when you're editing the photos. So I'm going to show you exactly what it takes and the other things to consider in this photo. So height versus distance versus camera angle. And what I mean by that is the first photo you're gonna to wanna to take, you don't wanna to be too high. You wanna get the horizon in the background. Not that that makes a difference later on and you know what I mean by that later. But you wanna get your subject nice and clear. In this case, we're using the KTM crossbow as our subject, which should look pretty cool, the car going up into the warped reality. So the distance and the height, you wanna, next, your second photo is you wanna increase the altitude and move forward slightly. What I mean by that is here from the side view, you can see where the drone should be at each point and where the photos are taken. You can see the drone positions and ideal camera angles for each photo. You'll need to play around with the height and distance for yourself to see what suits you best, but this is a guide for what's worked for me. I usually take around five to seven photos and now I'll show you what it looks like when we're capturing the shots. By your second photo, you're gonna to wanna to tilt the camera down slightly. So you can still see the horizon, you don't wanna tilt it down too much, but you don't wanna have moved forwards and increased your height. Take the second photo of that. Then you wanna increase your height again and move forwards again, tilting the camera angle a little bit more down, taking your third photo. By your fourth photo, again, tilt the camera angle down, more altitude and move further down the road. By your fifth, sixth and seventh photo, you want to at least almost have the camera completely facing down towards the ground. But your height needs to increase and of course go further down the road. Take a few of these because these you can use as your safety photos later on and you can pick which downward facing photo you want as your last photo to stitch together. And now we're going to head back and edit the photos together. But before we do that, some of you are probably wondering, I've got a car like this. 
why don't I give it a hoon? Well, I actually want to know if it donuts. And I want to know that with any type of car that I get into like this, any sports car, luxury car, any car that I have on this channel, I want to see if it at least donuts. Okay, so now that I've got that off my chest, that was awesome. And yes, the answer is it does donut. I mean, come on, it literally asks the question ready to race on the startup sequence. When you stick the key in the ignition on the dashboard, it asks you the, the question ready to race. And of course, my answer is gonna be yes. So just for you guys that, you know, a little bit opinionated on what I did there, that road area is actually closed off. The desert dunes are reclaiming that road back and you can't really drive down there, so it's closed off. And I'm not the only one apparently to be doing that down there as that looks like a pretty popular place to do it. Those skid marks on that roundabout are not all from me, believe it or not. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump into our computer, import the images and get them open in Photoshop and start stitching them together. So once we've opened this image in Photoshop, the first thing we're also going to do is we are going to double the height size in it as a canvas because we wanna bring those other images in and layer them on top. There we go. And then we can bring this image right down to the bottom here and then start bringing in the other images. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna bring these down. I'm gonna just label them as they come in. That's number one because I want that to be my bottom one and start off uh, as the first image that's going to show through. And the fifth image, and I'm just going to leave it at the fifth image because I think I'm just going to use five images. I'll probably only end up using four. Okay, so now all these are imported in. As you can see, I'll turn the layers off so you can see all the images that are there, starting with our first original image. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just line this up. So you can see I'm lining this up with the road here, with these lines. So if you do this to start off with, stick a layer mask on it. And instead of erasing the image itself, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the brush tool, B for shortcut and I'm going to bring my opacity and flow down to by about 50%. I don't want it to be so harsh, you see, and because the layer mask is already in white and we're using our foreground color as black with the brush tool, as you can see, is when you start painting that on there, it will start deleting or erasing the area around. And as you can see, I'm bringing the, the subject, the car and us through already. And these bottom lines here from the, the, the second image over the top of the first image, you can see there's harsh lines at the bottom here. So what I wanna do is I wanna just start painting that out. So I can start seeing through from the image behind. And I can switch back and forth between the foreground and the background layer. So if I change the uh, layer, foreground layer now to white, I can start painting that image back in. It's just, it's better masking as opposed to erasing because when you erase, you completely erase the image um, and you can't get it back. So masking is more efficient. And you can keep fine tuning it, but what we'll do is we'll come back to that a little bit later on. As you can see, that's starting to take shape and blending into that first image that we've got there. So what I want to do now is bring the third image in and start lining this up. Now, if I press Command T for transform, right click, 
and click warp. And what this will do is this will warp specific parts of the image. So if I come out here, you can see that starts stretching out. And what I want to do is just line that tree up there. That will help me out a little bit later on. And just bring that road back in. Just making sure that the lines all match up first. That's the first thing we want to be doing here. Um, because then when we start masking out those areas, the roads are already lined up, all the lines were already lined up, and the masking blending into the image behind it is a lot easier. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a layer mask for this one as well. So if we go to the brush tool and start painting that through, you can see it gets rid of those harsh lines. Because there's a tree directly behind it, because I had a tree right in the foreground there, which can be tricky. What, ideally, what you want to get is like lots of tree coverage, lots of green. But of course, living out here in the desert, we're very scarce for trees. So the trees are quite randomly laid out. So in this case, what I want to make sure we do is just bring that tree through. And there are many ways of masking out the edges of trees to bring the fine lines back through. But for the sake of this, what I can do is I can just bring that tree through by using the mask tool and blending it and then start painting this back through. So I'm actually going to bring this tree through from the image underneath just to make it look like there was a tree coming through from the side of the image here. OK, now I'm just going to blend the road in. The road behind it, Let's just get rid of those harsh lines. So what we'll do later on is we will tweak the each layer of the image, the contrast exposure and the color so they match all of the other images underneath it and they look overall one image. So now as you can see with this next image, image number four, the road starts bending a little bit. So if this is your first time doing this, as I said before, make sure that you choose a road that's completely straight uh, because that will make this process here what we're doing right now slightly easier, especially for your first time. But I wanted to challenge myself because I wanted to add a little bit more character and see how it behaves in the editing process and how each image layer matches with the one underneath it. So we're just going to now try and adjust that. Same again with this one, layer mask and start brushing out those harsh lines. So you can see everything starts blending in from the image underneath. And that's the beauty of making sure that we capture all of those photos in that right order that we did when we had the drone in the air. So here's another technique. Using the marquee tool, you can select that edge part of the image here. Press Command T for transform, hold Shift down and just expand this area over like this. Don't stretch it too much because then it starts looking fake. But you can do it to a certain degree where it covers that area of the image. And because it's a landscape and they've got multiple details in it, you can't tell if it's been stretched or not. It's clone stamping it, making sure it looks authentic. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to speed this up, do some fine tuning to make it a complete image. Almost done. OK, so what we're going to do now is just adjust some of the contrast, the exposure or the colors from each image. I'll show you how to do that and you can go through and fine tune it as much as you like just to make sure that each layer matches up. So how you do that is just go down here to the adjustment layer, right click on, let's say, the exposure. That will create that adjustment layer there. And what we want to do is we only want that to affect the layer underneath it. Right click on that and create clipping mask. And as you see, that what we adjust here will only affect that image underneath it. So I'll just show you so you can see the difference in that, you see the difference now. And because I had already matched the color, the exposure and the contrast between the images in Lightroom before this, they all pretty much match up. But if you find that they don't want particular images slightly darker, maybe the cloud covered the sun or just the lighting in that environment was slightly different on that next photo that you captured, you can adjust it like this here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. This image is almost complete. You can keep going in and fine tuning the layers, the masks. Here's an image that I finished off earlier, going through the different layers, finalizing the blending and just making it overall look like a finished image. And that looks pretty trippy. That's awesome. I'm really happy with that. 
So these are the tools, these are the techniques to stitch these images together. You might end up using less images, but I'd say four is a good amount of images. Sometimes five is good. So you can choose which downward facing photo you want to use later on. And you have that choice and option to play around with it. You can keep tweaking this, you know, as you like, it's up to you. You can be really picky, a perfectionist, or just get something that looks finished like this photo. And I'm really happy with this. And now that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for making it this far. I hope you enjoyed this fun way of making photos, especially for you drone pilots. If you like this video, give us the old like. And if you're new here, subscribe because I will be making more content like this coming up in the future and hit the bell button so you don't miss the next time I do upload. And if you are inspired by this video and want to go and create one of these cool droneception photos, tag me on our IG at what adventures I'll put it in the description below as well I'd love to see what you guys do with this and maybe I'll feature it in an up and coming video oh and if you also want to know where these locations are that I do visit in Dubai or worldwide drop me a DM on Instagram and I'll be happy to share the location map with you so that's it for me in this video I'll catch you guys in the next one peace <music>